by a sex therapist. A bit of a one-stop shop for any kind of sexual problems. Solo sex is sometimes better because there's less pressure on yourself and you can just actually explore your body and think, what do I like? I focus on about pleasure. We're at zero and we have to get to 10. A lot of men won't actually be able to ejaculate, but they will be able to feel orgasm. We need to have a really nice sexual thought or an image or an idea in our mind. And that sends the signals around the body and gets the blood flow pumping in the right directions. But the minute we panic and think, am I going to get an erection? All that good blood flow will just vanish. The erection or the arousal feeling will just go because the adrenaline kicks in and kills it. I always encourage people to think, forget what 10 looks like. Let's start with one and let's see what just even feeling a bit of arousal or imagining something sexy in your mind, maybe even looking at a bit of erotica or some some porn. I think people get a bit hung up about, you know, you should never look at porn, but there's ethical porn around or female friendly porn. And if you use some of that in your own imagination and just changing it, we don't want the same thing. You don't want steak every night. Sometimes we just want a basic burger. And so to change it around a little can sometimes be be good. It can be right. fun to do. Some men will masturbate in a particular way. So they might need to alter how they masturbate. They might need to maybe hold the penis tighter. Let's imagine this is the penis is that it might be the head of the penis is more sensitive or lower down the shaft where maybe it holds it tight with one hand and masturbates with the other. Use really good lubricants as well, not sticky gel type stuff. So imagine if this is either if you're in a heterosexual relationship, the vagina, or if you're in a same sex relationship and it's your, your male partner's uh, 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 bottom that you've been sexual with is if you massage that around and imagine this is the penis it makes it really nice it's slippy and slidy it's really relaxing it can feel pleasant straight away you wouldn't book in and have a massage somewhere and expect them to do dry hands on dry skin because it can feel like it's burning but if you use something like a nice oil and then oh it's so slippy now I can't open it but then we add in the water is that then what happens is you get it and it's even wetter. So it feels slippy and slidey. So when all orgasm can occur, it feels like there is liquid there. There is, it, it's not sperm, obviously it's not sperm, but it still feels like there's something. So it, it can still feel really, really nice. And for some men as well, after certain treatment, they will leak some urine as well. And that's okay. It helps the body relax. And the more relaxed you get, the more aroused that you can get. You can buy male vibrators that are much stronger, that you can put the penis in between, it vibrates. So that if you've got less sensitivity, some of those are quite expensive. If you put the vibrator under the penis, so it's, it's vibrating against the testicles as well, that feels a lot nicer for men. It's about keeping in your mind pleasure and fun. Rather than medical, I'm about getting the fun back. It's a chance to rethink it and think, well, actually, I've never tried that, but I do really like it. You know, maybe dressing yeah. up, maybe toys, maybe role play, looking at porn, listening to it. You can get some great downloads of erotic fiction as well as the biggest sex organ, the brain. Men think it's their penis. Sadly, it's not. It's here. It's the brain. If you're having tablets, to not use one on demand an hour before sex, I would be saying having a daily dose in. Let's keep that penis alive. Let's get morning erections returning, all of those sorts of things. But then still do the play. It's about making it fun, not waiting for it to happen. If you are on your own, experiment away. Try different things. Try different textures. What do you feel like? Is it through clothing that turns you on a bit more? Do you need to be a bit harder on something? You can get different things that you can use, like a pretend vagina or, or an anus. It's okay to try things, and you have to give yourself permission to do that rather than thinking, well, this is it, my sex life's over. It doesn't need to be because the focus, as we go back to that one to ten, what does two feel like? What does three feel like? Do I need to be watching something else? visually to get a little bit more aroused what does orgasm feel like to me tweaking nipples pressing hard on the breast scratching around the chest we all know erogenous zones are in different parts of our body maybe just gently but running hands through the hair maybe a bit of tugging you have to kind of 
have a go at these things. And, and some men will say, oh, gosh, you know, I really thought I'd enjoy a blindfold, but I hated it. And for other men, they'll say, oh, I wish I'd found that a long time ago. That was fantastic. Playing with food, cream, squirty cream, oral sex with squirty cream. It suddenly looks a lot like sperm going on. Foreplay doesn't all have to be kind of breasts and bottoms and penises and vaginas going on. It can be other parts of the body and it can be playful so that by the time you get to more sexual things, on that scale of 0 to 10, you're already at 3, 4 or maybe 5. But once you accept your situation and your diagnosis and what's happened, it's then you can build on if you keep looking back, you trip up and fall over. You have to look forward and think, well, let's see it as an opportunity to explore and maybe do something different. If they're in a heterosexual relationship, the female will squeeze her breast together and they will use lots of lubricant and, and he can rub in between. And he feels like maybe when he does orgasm, it's and especially if she's able to move from being between the breast to oral sex, he'll feel like he's ejaculating into her mouth as well. Don't forget the partner's sexual needs. And it's same for in a gay relationship, you know, who was top and who was bottom before? And that might have to suddenly change or be renegotiated in some way of what might be happening. But we get hung up on the person that's got the difficulty but it often leaves the, the partner with a difficulty as well because they maybe can't express their wishes. Maybe write it down, make it as big and as beautiful and as exciting as you want it to be.